I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At eight minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. Billy, I'm proud of you. I never thought you'd be able to pull it off. Well, let's face it, Doris, I, I don't know if I have yet. Putting yourself into a drug rehab program for six months don't automatically reshape your skull. Oh, come on. Why be so down on yourself? The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Hello, I'm Stan Martin. It's sad that many youngsters feel the only way they can make their mark on our town is with a destructive act or a smear of graffiti. One building on New York's Lower East Side stands apart from the others. Its walls are spotless inside and out. The youngsters who work and play there have earned the respect of the entire city just as they've learned to respect themselves. I'm talking about the Boys Brotherhood Republic. The BBR has been helping underprivileged boys work their way out of the slums for almost 50 years. By giving them the responsibility of governing and policing themselves, the BBR helps create a set of values which guide its members all their lives. I know because I was a member from the time I was six, and the BBR helped change my life. It's doing the same right now for hundreds of youngsters with no other place to turn but the streets. Help the BBR turn out solid citizens. Please send whatever financial support you can to the Boys Brotherhood Republic, 888 East 6th Street, New York, 10009. Thank you. Your long association says smoke's not just your affair. That smoke screen that you puff around pollutes non-smokers' air. It's bad for kids and older folks with lungs not up to par. It's damaging for you, of course, but your smoke travels far. Your lung association says please keep this thought in mind. It's double damage all around and doubly unkind. So try to keep the habit and give everyone a break. Please do it for your life and breath and every. Lung Association and you know that cigarettes are a breathing hazard. Smokers, please don't add that extra offense. Give us a break for life and breath. This is Cicely Tyson. Our story is about a man who seemed incapable of doing right for doing wrong. There were people who called him a musical genius in the purest, most uncommercial sense in which the term can be understood. He was a deeply troubled human being who seemed occasionally to yearn for a harmonious life, but denied the possibility of ever achieving it by using drugs, artificial escapes into false bottom utopias. This story is an attempt to show facets of the man that were never revealed to the public. Listen to this. Listen to what Leo Leather wrote. On a scale of one to ten, ascending, we could easily credit Billy D. Burton, trumpet involuntary, man of a hundred glistening jazz tones with a zero. Our column refers to Mr. Burton's concert of last evening at Philmon Hall. Everyone was there but Billy D. Burton himself. Why he wasn't there could not be clearly established from the tenth row, middle aisle. His band was there. His trumpet was there. Elements of his charismatic personality were there. But Billy D. Burton was not there, in the sense that we normally associate a performer with his performance. Leo Leather. Who the hell does he think he is? Yeah, who does he think he is? Ah, come on. Now, both of you know I I was out of it last night. Out of it. And that's the truth, Billy. You were out of it. And Leo Leather, one of the most influential jazz columnists in the country... Caught you in your act. I don't care what this guy says. You were... Ah, shut up, Percy. You wouldn't know the truth if it beat you over the head. Billy, you've got to pull yourself out of this dope bag. It's killing you. I don't think anyone would have any trouble reading between the lines in this column. You've got to pull out. I know. When, Billy? When? I don't know. Soon, I guess. I don't know. And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio.
Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Billy D. Burton by Odie Hawkins. Our stars, Robert Doki and Robin Braxton. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little, too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shops. Dear, today I found the bedroom suite of my dreams at a great price. That's a coincidence. I found one that has all the features. Well, mine has authentic country styling. So does mine. Does yours have a beautiful 26-step finish? Nothing but, and I get a choice of 13 different pieces. All built to last for a long time? Yes, with sturdy tongue and groove construction and dovetail jointed drawers. <gasps> Is yours Sears, Sears open, open hearth, hearth bedroom, bedroom furniture? furniture? Sears open hearth bedroom collection. Expert craftsmanship at a reasonable price. Select from 13 different pieces. Now at most Sears retail stores. It's that time of year, America. Sears National Home Appliance Sale is on. Celebrate great savings on many Sears major home appliances. Save from $20 to $100 on selected Kenmore washers and dryers, refrigerators, dishwashers, color TVs, microwave ovens, vacuums, and more. So save big and hurry to Sears National Home Appliance Sale now. Sale ends July 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Kenmore, solid as Sears. At most larger Sears retail stores. Inevitably, we find ourselves looking backward as we rush forward, realizing that what happened before will occur again. Isn't that the formula for a legend? Yeah, that ought to do it. I keep promising myself I'll get a new tape recorder, one of the fancier models that operate by remote control. Well, that wouldn't be as much fun for you, would it? <laughs> <laughs> I guess you have a point there, Mrs. Burton. Uh, now then, uh, shall we go on? Oh, yes. I welcome the chance to tell the truth about my son. And Jazzway Magazine welcomes the chance to print the truth. You were giving us a brief look at what Billy Burton was like as a boy. Oh, he was the sweetest thing. He was the closest thing I've ever known to a perfectly behaved child. He was always ready to go to the store or lift something for me. Never any problem with fighting or any of the kind of stuff that boys normally do. And as a boy, did he offer any evidence of being musically inclined? Well, I can't really say that he showed any interest in music. Not really. But whenever he went over to Sadie's house... Uh, Sadie? Uh, my sister, Billy's aunt... Well, whenever he went over to visit, he just seemed to enjoy blowing on my brother-in-law's old trumpet from the high school band. Well, I'd be the last person in the world to say he was playing music. When were you first made aware that Billy had an exceptional musical talent? Do you remember? I remember it. I remember it distinctly. He turned 14 that summer, and I was sitting on the porch of the old house... You know, the word we had before he bought this one for me. Yes. I was just sitting there, took it out for my day's work. When I heard this sound, first thing I thought was someone has turned on the radio. Well, it was like it was Gabriel himself blowing that horn. What happened when you discovered it was your son doing the blowing? Well, I did what any mother would do. I offered him a chance to take music. Well, did he take you up on your offer? Well, for a little while, and... And he would have kept it up if it hadn't been for that low-life crowd down at Bootsy's. Bootsy's, the uh, neighborhood club where he first played professionally? Well, that's the place. Uh, you've called Bootsy's a low-life establishment. Would you please elaborate on that? That's what it was. A bunch of no-good rascals hanging around, just waiting to spread their evil ways. Uh, this is the club where Billy was first introduced to hard drugs, isn't it? Oh, no, that's not true. My son was never on dope. Fourteen years of documented evidence tells us that he was addicted to heroin, Mrs. Burton. Wasn't your son a, a bit young to be frequenting a nightclub? Well, yes. Uh, 
He was 14 years old, but he was grown up looking. And besides, it didn't make much difference to the club owner. The owner was the mayor's nephew, and he could pretty much do what he wanted to, even having a minor playing the trumpet in his club. Mrs. Burton, if you could single out one event that you felt was the turning point in Billy's life, what would it be? I'd say it was when that woman came into his life. You're speaking of Eliana Stamatis. Mm -hmm, never could pronounce that woman's name. How do you say it? Eliana Stamatis. Mm. <laughs> being introduced to my own country after a youth spent in Swiss schools, courtesy of my rags-to-riches immigre papa, getting away from art classes at the Sorbonne, a brief fling at marriage and photography. I'm still interested in photography. How old were you when you met Billy D. Burton? Please refrain from asking undiplomatic questions, young man. Oh, uh, well, what I meant was... Yes, I know exactly what you meant. As I said earlier, I was being introduced to my country for the first time. Dada's idea. I'm sure he never had a Billy D. Burton in mind when he suggested that I see America. Was there some sort of formal introduction made uh, when you met? No, none of that junk. I made it plain that I wanted to be taken to, entertained by, exposed to the lower classes. The lower, the better. I couldn't make myself believe that the lower classes were any better than the underclasses. All of them were purely American in my opinion. You were a snob, in other words. Uh, how did you see Billy D. Burton? In my own country for the first time, and I was made aware of that class, the artistic elite, which is nourished by a bloodstream that does not depend on money or heritage for its position. I came, I looked, I heard, and I wanted two of them. Unfortunately, one was enough. It was obvious that the lady was into something, dig it? What I mean is, uh, you could look at it and tell she was out there. Any white like chicka could pop through boots as looking like a million stones and capable of holding a mug at the same time had to be out there. It was obvious that the lady dug Billy. Now, I don't mean like dug him physically. It was a, a genius art thing. She knew he was somewhere, and she wanted to take him to other places. How could I stroll in, see genius at work, and simply walk out? Billy D. Burton? Uh, well, of course, uh, professional ethics would prevent me from revealing the results of seven years of psychoanalysis. But I can say this to you. Uh, Monsieur Burton was completely out of his mind. You understand? Très intelligent, but mad as a hatter. Here they come. More values from Sears, like a dollar forty-four pull-on shorts and a dollar ninety-nine tank tops for women. They're colorful polyester tank tops that slip on neatly over the double knit nylon shorts. Shorts with elastic waist and stitched front creases. Just watch them go. Sears a dollar forty-four shorts and a dollar ninety-nine tank tops for women. All set for action. Hurry in while quantities last. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Here are more super values from Sears. We saw one hundred dollars off the. Price of our Craftsman 10-inch table and radial saws. Now only $279.95 each. And they saw cross cuts, bevels, and more. Sears Best Table Saw includes leg set, two extensions, and one horsepower motor. The radial saw has a one and a half horsepower motor and a single lever miter arm control. Hurry! Your choice, Sears 10-inch table or radial saw. Only $279.95 till July 21st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Light up your life and home during Sears National Home Lighting Sale. Rack up savings like $50 on a crystal glass chandelier, $10 on a country kitchen fixture, save $3 on utility room lights, and more. Sears has light fixtures on sale for your living room, bedroom, rec room, and hallways, too. The savings are hot, but they stop July 21st, so score now. Sears National Home Lighting Sale. Let it make your life and home a whole lot brighter. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The well-known path for 
our chosen few is straight up hill. But the path is full of pitfalls. A thousand hours of psychoanalytic hair splitting would not be able to reveal why one goes straight to the top and another one falls into one pit after another. Listen here now, Percy. Listen to this. Two nights ago, in a large club in New York City, Billy D. Burton, brass tongue impresario of new feelings, flamenco sold Gabriel, the real jazz, led us into new areas of sensitivity. We may not be privileged to be exposed to such emotionality again, ever. This is not written as a prophecy of doom, but rather as a delightful warning to our European friends, the current beneficiaries of Billy D. Burton's Second Continental Tour. Well, when Leo Leather likes you, he shows it. You said it, kiddo. What could be better to start a tour off with? Where's Billy? I'd like for him to see this. You're going to hate me for what I have to tell you. Risk it. Where is he? In New York. We're on our way to a Billy D. Burton concert in one of London's largest music halls. Thousands are waiting to hear him, and Billy is in New York? How in the hell could he be in New York when he's supposed to be on this train? Doris, please. It's a long... Don't Doris me, you gutless punk. I gave you instructions to stay with him every single moment. I did, Doris, I did. Well, if you stayed with him every moment, you ought to be able to tell me where he is. In New York. New York? <laughs> Let me explain. He had to make a trip to the John just before we boarded in New York, and he gave me this note. But I didn't know what kind of note it was until we were preparing to take off. What note? What did it say? Where is it? It said, uh, got a little unfinished business to take care of. See you in London. Why didn't you tell me this before we boarded this train at Horwich? Why did you lie and tell me he was sleeping? Why? Uh, I... Percy, if Billy doesn't make it on time for this concert, I promise you, not a threat. You understand? A promise. I promise you that you will never work in Hollywood again. Do I make myself clear? Crystal clear, Doris. Now, what was this unfinished business about? The usual, I would imagine. <laughs> Did we shoot all the dope? No, not all. You want me to cook up the rest of this? If I do, we won't have a wake-up shot. Who needs a wake-up? Who needs tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> we got today, ain't that enough? You're fantastic, Billy. <laughs> really fantastic. That's why I dig you. Would you still dig me if I was just plain Joe Blow? Hell no. <laughs> then you'd be nobody. And we wouldn't have this high-grade junk to shoot. And you wouldn't be Billy D. Burton. And I wouldn't gain any prestige from being with you or anything. Okay, okay, let's not get deep about things. Now, why don't we just shoot the dope and forget about everything else? You like the idea of losing yourself, don't you? You sound like my shrink. Oh, I hate this junk. This garbage going through my veins. I do, too. Then why do we do it? Because we both are infantile idiots who are afraid to face our reality. <laughs> <laughs> What's your reality? My reality is being in front of a mob of Englishmen this evening. If my international watch is right. Will you make it? <sighs> who knows? Am I? Am I? I just might make it. <laughs> <laughs> Now, look here, Doris. We had an agreement. We have almost 3,000 people out there clamoring to see and hear the inimitable Billy D. Burton. I can't tell them he isn't here. I'm afraid you're going to have to, kiddo. The concert is now exactly an hour and a half old, and there's no sign of Billy D. Burton. And frankly, I don't think there will be. I think you ought to tell your customers that and refund their money. But look here, you don't seem to understand. These people have come to hear Billy D. Burton and his horn. And they may not want to leave should I announce that he isn't appearing this evening. I know. I know. I understand your position. Uh, why? Why? I have been trying to answer that for the last five years. Come in, whatever it is. I just got this. It's from Billy. Let me see that. Sorry, couldn't finish unfinished business in time. Give my excuses. Love, Billy D. P.S. See you in Amsterdam on time. How, 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 how can he do this sort of thing? Seems to be pretty easy for him. Well, I shall, of course, demand a return of all advance monies and, in addition, begin breach of contract proceedings immediately. The line forms to the left. Check. 
Sears Radio Theater will continue after this message from your local station. You've changed, Bernard. You're not the man I married. What do you mean, Francine? Remember the way you were? Vulnerable? You made mistakes. But now, look, you're confident. Everything you do turns out right. It's that book you sent away for. It's just a catalog mm. from the Consumer Information Center. It lists more than 200 federal publications you can send for. On building, fixing, eating... Buying, selling, working, playing, living... And more than half of them are free. Yes, Francine, the man you married is gone for good. Mm. All right, Bernard. But would you make just one more mistake for old time's sake? All right. For you, oh. I'll just replace that window glass like I used to. Whatever you do, learn to do it better. Send for your free catalog. Just write Consumer Catalog, Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Francine, send for that publication on first aid. What was that address? Pueblo, Colorado, 81009. Say, this is Bob Hope. I've spent a happy lifetime on radio and television, and I'd like to put in a good word for the hobby that made broadcasting possible. You see, about 60 years ago, some early radio experimenters developed our first stations. Today, there are nearly a million amateur radio operators around the world talking to each other, standing ready to provide us with emergency communication in time of disaster and still developing new electronic techniques. They have their own amateur television stations and even satellites circling the globe. On some of our trips to isolated spots overseas, my troop and I kept in touch with home through amateur radio stations. You want to know how you can join in? Now that many people are discovering the fun of talking by personal radio, maybe you'd like the really exciting and wonderful world of amateur radio. It takes study, but it's worth it. For free information, write to the American Radio Relay League, Newington, Connecticut, 06111. Like they say, tune in the world with amateur radio. Over. <laughs> Can you hear that applause? Can you hear them all through the concert? The crowd in London would have given you the same reception. Come on, Doris. Let's not go back through that again, okay? I'm afraid we have to, kiddo, judging from the cancellations we've received. Cancellations? What cancellations? Well, the Cannes Jazz Festival is out for one, and we can forget about Moscow, Athens, and Budapest. Okay, so they're canceled. What's left? They still seem to be hungering for your body in Berlin, Warsaw, Stockholm, and Copenhagen. It doesn't sound too bad to me. Maybe it doesn't to you, but let me make you understand oh, something. Come on, Doris. No lectures, please. You sound like my mother when you go off on these little trips. Okay, no lectures. Just a shot of truth, okay? Okay, okay, rap to me. Go on, I'm listening. No, you're not listening, Billy. You're spaced on dope. And what I'm saying probably makes no sense to you. I hear you, Doris. I hear you. I still got my stuff together. Now you know that. Now, what time are we doing, Berlin? Ten o'clock. Good. I hope they're ready for me. What made you do it? What in the world possessed you to go on stage an hour late to begin with and then insult those people by giving them a Hitler imitation and calling them all Nazis? Did I do that? You better believe you did it. I quote, You people are just a bunch of Nazis. You always were and you always will be. Man, are you out of your mind? Could be. Sometimes uh, I won. Oh, I've got a terrible headache. I'll talk to you later. You gave a fantastic performance, Billy. Otherwise... What do you mean, otherwise? I'm talking about those two numbers you played before you went into the Hitler-Nazi thing. I played, too? Yeah. I'm sure they'll never forget you. I'm sure. <laughs> Listen, Percy, I, I want you to cop some dope for me when we get to Copenhagen. I'm fresh out and I'm beginning to be a little edge. Oh, sure, Billy, but you told Doris that... Come on off the soapbox. Forget that. Okay, Billy. Okay. Oh, you've got everything? Tickets, etc., etc., etc.? Yeah, darts, I got everything. Look, I'm sorry about the concert. Oh, skip I... it. 
Look, are you sure you don't want to fly? The boat will take a week. Like I said, uh, I just don't seem to be able to deal with flying this week. Billy. Yeah, Doris? See your shrink as soon as you get in, okay? I intend to, Doris. Yeah, I intend to. Here's Leo Leather's latest. Listen to this. Even to the diehard groups of masochists who have rationalized themselves into an acceptance of Billy D. Burden's infantile behavior, both on and off the stand, a bit of disillusionment seems to be seeping through the ranks. Three evenings ago, fresh from an untriumphant European tour, Billy D. Burden alternately depressed and scandalized just such a group. In this day and age, to be able to use a word like scandalize is certainly indicative of how rotten things are in Denmark, which incidentally deported Billy D. Burton at the beginning of his non-tour. One wishes it possible to be able to give a more positive report on a performer who formerly offered us, with each performance, an earful of greatness and from time to time a whisper of genius. I think Leather's column says it all. The hell it does. Now, where are we booked this weekend? I have a skiing date. Oh, come on, Doris. I knew you got enough clout to get me in somewhere. You've killed yourself, Billy. Your record sales are uneven, meaning down. Your personal appearances have come to an end because you only seem to attract crazies when you finally do put in an appearance. I'll reform. Let's skip the pious stuff. I can only think of one place offhand that would give you a chance to appear on its stage. Great, great, I'll take it. It's close by. Well, what kind of door are we talking about? Very little. This is the Lodestar. The Lodestar? The Lodestar. Take it or leave it. But what about Vegas and Reno and one of those Hollywood spots? The Lodestar is one of the Hollywood spots. Take it or leave it. What kind of money? Like I said, very little. Well, the Lodestar it is. <laughs> Okay, so there's this hippie type walking through Times Square. He has a sack full of wooden flutes. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to present one of the seven wonders of the entertainment world, Mr. Billy D. Burton. Yeah. Do you please welcome Mr. Burton to Lodestar. Yeah. I mean, this guy has enough bamboo flutes in a sack on his back to build a house, right? He's real excited and looking for something. He stops a man who obviously looks like he's in the know. You know what I mean? With the long hair and all. Uh, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> Start off with this evening. Hey, buddy, uh, how do I get to Carnegie Hall, he asks. Practice, baby, practice, the guy tells him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Hey, who's that jerk waving the bugle up there? Hey, get that jerk out of here! Oh, oh, oh. Gentlemen, I beg your indulgence. Get that creep out of here! Stay here! You allow the You don't deserve That's a enough, silly thing! Get your hands off me! Get Come on! Out of here, Burton! And don't come back! Right on. Don't call us, we'll call you! Oh, oh, oh. Then what happened? They booted me out. That's what happened. Kept my pay. Why, when you talk, do you say the wrong thing? I really do. Hey, Cookie. Huh? Why don't we get married? <laughs> married? <laughs> me and you? <laughs> oh, oh, I can see it now. Superstar horn player marries... Nobody. Let's get the headlines, baby. I mean, really, anybody needs somebody, and I need you. I was totaling up the books the other night, and you know something? No, what? I reached the conclusion that you're the only woman I know who has stuck by me always. Your manager is still in your corner. I don't want to talk about her. I want to talk about us. Come on, Billy boy. Skip the emotional trip. I got a pass that stretches around the corner and it's filled with bums, creeps, you name it. Cooking. Maybe we could kick together. You know we have to sometime. You know that, don't you? There's even less a future for either of us, together or apart, shooting heroin. Billy, 
I can tell that you're sincere. Let me think it over for a bit, okay? Okay. But just remember, the third time round is always the easiest. Did we shoot the last of the dope? I'm not going to stand for this. We've been married three months, and you haven't spent one night at home with me. Not one. Well, business to be taken care of, sweetheart, and you know how it is. Don't give me that. Your manager calls. I leave the messages to contact her. She calls me back, wanting to know what happened. And all I can say is, I gave him the message. And you're going to try to tell me you're taking care of some kind of business? Well, who are you to talk? And what are you doing packing that? I was feeding us, paying rent, keeping us supplied with dope, and trying to twist your head around straight. But now I'm leaving. A cookie, cookie, you can't. Baby, you can't leave me. Watch very carefully. Oh, dear God. Oh, God. <laughs> Billy, I'm proud of you. I never thought you'd be able to pull it off. Well, let's face it, Doris. I, I don't know if I have yet. Putting yourself into a drug rehab program for six months don't automatically reshape your skull. Oh, come on. Why be so down on yourself? If you can kick a drug habit, you can fight all the rest of the demons. Now, how about joining me for a taste of my poison? Scotch and soda? Right on the money, kiddo. Right on the money. Now, let's have an understanding about this Tahoe gig. Nick Ross was and is an old fan of yours. He's willing to come close to top dollar for his room. With the option of holding you over if... if everything works out all right. But don't worry. I'm on the right track. Good. You've got two weeks to prepare for the first show. Two weeks? Well, you could take longer if you wanted to. But we felt the sooner you got back onto the track, the better. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Terrific. Now, the crucial part. The money isn't great, but the room has prestige. And it means you'll be given a hearing by you-know-who. <laughs> Leo Leather says, quote, Once again, Billy D. Burton failed to pull through his latest crisis. If he had offered us any indication that his recent stay in a drug rehabilitation unit had served any purpose, I think most of his audience would have offered goodwill with their tepid applause. Such an offer from Billy D. Burton was not forthcoming. Opening night. I was not able to attend the second show, nor was Billy D. Burton, according to my usual reliable sources. Oh, why, Billy? Why? I what? Why anything? Why you didn't make the second show? Why you didn't make the first show on time the second night? Why don't you pull your act together? My act is together. Like hell it is. I think you've received your share of the rewards. No reward could ever compensate me for what I've had to go through with you. Bailing you out of one mess after another, trying to convince club owners and myself that you were stable enough to have a gig in their club, untangling your crazy money-making scheme. Speaking of money... Don't speak of it because you don't have any. What do you mean I don't have any? You heard me. You don't have any money. You've blown it all, most of it in your veins. You are back on the stuff, aren't you? Better know it. Since when, Billy? Since the day after I got out of the drug rehab program. The room held several Sears brass-plated lamps. One switched on. The finely plated antique satin shade illuminated the furniture softly. Another lamp turned on, and another. The patio doors blew open. The green brass-plated lamp nearby, with its heavy base built for stability, did not budge. The room glowed in the brassy elegance that these Sears best lamps command. Create your own hauntingly elegant moods with Sears brass-plated lamps at most larger Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Values. Now get the Sears Heavy Duty Shock just $9.99 each installed. Smooth out some of the jolts, jars, and jerks with America's best-selling shock. And get the Weather Handler, Sears all-weather steel-belted radial tire. As low as $29.88 plus $1.76 federal excise tax on size P165 ADR13. Save 10%. This is the minimum national savings. Regular prices vary in some markets. Super Values at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Stop at Sears!
Why not ruffle up a window with tradition from Sears Open Hearth Collection? Our inheritance Cape Cod curtains have plenty of big, fluffy ruffles for that traditional New England look that's become an American favorite. They're an easy care permapressed fabric made from 65% Codell polyester and 35% cotton, completely machine washable. Choose from 14 distinctive colors, one of the largest selections to be found anywhere. So carry on a decorating tradition, the Cape Cod look from Sears, available at most larger Sears retail stores. Cicely Tyson again, and here's the concluding act of Billy D. Burton. What did you say your name was? You hard of hearing or something? Billy D. Burton. What does the initial stand for? Well, some people say the D is for damned. My mother says it's for Dylan. Then you are the Billy D. Burton. Yep, I am the Billy D. Burton. And I'm broke, and I'm applying for welfare, and you're a social worker, and you bought all my albums, and you're one of my greatest fans, right? Well, all that happens to be true. But I'm beginning to feel a little nauseated from the way you make it sound. I'm sorry, baby. I guess I'm feeling pretty negative about a lot of things these days. Mm, yes, I understand. Now then, you know you are eligible for a grant. We have a category for unmarried, poverty-stricken, single males. That's me. I'm pinching myself. I mean, well, you wouldn't understand. I mean, let's face it. You are Billy D. Burton. How could you understand what that means? Well, maybe I can't. Want to try me? Maybe. Well, forget about lunch. I can hardly afford meat. You like boiled hot dogs? I only live a couple of blocks from here. Well, this is it. I've got a little uh, rosé in the fridge if you'd like something. Nothing stronger? Well, I'm a fresh out of all that cocaine and hair on and the rest of the stuff you're reputed to use. <laughs> you really know a lot about me, huh? Only what I read in the papers. How would you like your hot dog? Medium rare? Well done or what? Once around lightly. <laughs> Are you aware that we've known each other for almost five months? No, I wasn't aware. And are you also aware that you've been drinking gin straight with your scrambled eggs and toast for the last three weeks? No, is that so? I mean, so what? Well, I mean, what are you planning to do other than drink gin every morning? And whatever it is that you do after I go to work. Well, what is it you'd like to have me to do? I don't know. I just don't know. Good afternoon, Doris Dobson's agency. This is Billy Burton. Let me speak to Doris. Uh, one moment, please. Billy? Yeah, this is Billy. What's happening, Doris? Oh, you know, same old number. What's happening with you? Nothing. Why do you think I called? I have no idea why you called, and I'm not particularly interested. What does that mean? You figure it out. Look, I, I'm a little busy right now. What was it you wanted? I need a gig, Doris. I need to work. I'm falling apart. I can't help you, Billy. Oh, come on, Doris. You've always got an ace up your sleeve somewhere. Everybody's booked. Sounds like you're trying to tell me something, Doris. Are you listening? Yeah. Goodbye, Billy, and good luck. Oh. So that's the way the world is. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Billy. <laughs> Play some jazz with you. Play for it, Billy. <laughs> but I ain't got no horn. <laughs> Them that's got you get. Them that's got silver. <laughs> yeah. 
hate that song. I've always hated that song. Shut up! Shut up! Billy? Billy? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. I'm getting you out of here. Why? Out? You don't think I fit? Let's knock off the tough guy stuff, kiddo. This is serious material we're dealing with. Who are you trying to convince? They banged you up pretty bad, huh? Not really. Just the sort of thing a bunch of wild and crazy guys would do to you. Billy, I wish there was some way I could make you take yourself seriously. You can. Joking again, huh? No, no, no joking this time. Get me out of here before I go crazy for real. Now get me out of here. I'll take myself seriously. It's already been taken care of. How could I possibly know that you were in a place like this and not come to the rescue? I didn't know you cared about me. Don't be dumb, Billy. I've always cared about you. You know what I mean. Yes, I know what you mean. Well, what are we going to do about it? Nothing now. The first thing for you to think about is getting out of this place. When? Everything is being greased, and it'll take about a month for the pieces to slide together. I skip all the jive, Doris. When will they unstrap my arms and let me out of this crazy house? It has to be within a month, or else you won't be able to appear at the tribute to Billy D. Burton concert. You talking about? A memorial concert for you. Well, I thought you had to be dead before they pull one of those cards out for you. Well, let's face it. A lot of people do think you're dead. I guess the concert would tell them that I'm not dead, huh? I don't think it would hurt. In addition, it would be the opening round of a machine gun blast that I've prepared for the world. Billy D. Burton returns. I've never been gone. Yes, you have, kiddo. And I think the world at large would be very interested in your return. I like this. I really do. Imagine coming out of a crazy house to blow people's minds. I'll never be the same. <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> It was truly a heavy scene. Heavy. Billy D. Burton, erratic great of the jazz horn, had gotten on a train somewhere in upstate Pennsylvania, smoothed out of a drug and personal problems, returning home to star in a memorial concert to himself. That requires ego, of which Billy has not been noted to have any lack. We sat and waited anxiously at first, trading hip sly little remarks at each other, dealing with Billy's return to the scene. His hassle in the madhouse, the thousand and one odd things we knew about him. The curtains shimmered, the cloth responding to the glittering anxiety seated before it. A pale rush of hot air being involuntarily exhaled toward the stage created the kind of feeling that made one feel as though one were present at the beginning gust of a hurricane. But Billy didn't show. The far out people will talk about it for the rest of their lives. They'll pass it along to their children. The night Billy D. Burton didn't show up for his own birthday party, in a manner of speaking. For some of us, the reason will be more clearly drawn. A professional failed to do his job, and we are beyond dealing with him on any other level. It looked good for a while, the effort being made to do the right thing, the commitment that is necessary to any craft, even one touched by magic. <coughs> <coughs> A little bit like reading your own obituary, huh? He had been visiting for a couple of weeks before he died here. It was an unbelievable sort of spiritual happening. He was on the verge of finding himself in his music. You could tell from the level of maturity that was announced in his playing. It was as though all of his suffering and frustration had channeled themselves into a core, something that made him less susceptible to criticism. He had been very disturbed by the Leo Leather column in a way I'd never known him to be, in some distorted way. He seemed to feel that he was a folk hero of some sort who was letting his side down. He was, in a sense, in training here when the attack came. 
His playing had reached that level of quality that the Spanish speak about when they say someone has duende. There is no literal translation for the word. It's beyond being merely soulful. Billy was there when the end came. He played before he died. A few things he was working on. I remember the ending of one of his arias in brass. It seemed to sum up his whole life. It's that time of year, America. Sears National Home Appliance Sale is on. Celebrate great savings on many Sears major home appliances. Save from $20 to $100 on selected Kenmore washers and dryers, refrigerators, dishwashers, color TVs, microwave ovens, vacuums, and more. So save big and hurry to Sears National Home Appliance Sale now. Sale ends July 28th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Kenmore, solid as Sears. It's another super value from Sears. The great summer savings go-round clearance in women's fashions. Save 25 to 40% on looks that add savvy to summer. Give cool, colorful dresses a whirl. Be in the summer swing in shorts and tops from the budget shop. Find much more in our Junior Bazaar and Mrs. Sportswear departments, too. The great summer savings go-round. A super clearance while limited quantities last. Sears, where America shops for value. But I can't. The money, the work. Paint or else. Oh, someone help. <laughs> Never fear. Sears House Paint Sale is here. You'll save $3 on each gallon of Sears paint. Just $6.99 for interior flat and ceiling paint. Only $7.99 for exterior flat and interior semi-gloss paint. And it's one coat only paint when used as directed. I'm saved. Person. Sears Paint Sale ends July 21st. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Billy D. Burton was written by Odie Hawkins. Produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Robert Dokey and Robin Braxton. Featured in the cast were Helen Martin, Stephen Markle, Byron Kane, Joan McCall, Ben Wright, Peggy Weber, and Jim Mapp. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. I'm Henry Winkler and I'm an actor and I'm proud of it. I've played many roles from Shakespeare to the Fonz. And right now I'm playing what I consider a significant spokesman role for the American Cancer Society. We're inviting you to join our cast of millions, the millions of Americans who are playing a role in the fight against cancer. Scientists in research laboratories, the people helping cancer patients with rehabilitation and other services, many of them former cancer patients themselves. All those volunteers playing an important role, ringing doorbells to help raise the funds needed to bring about a happy ending to our centuries-old drama, the war against cancer. Answer. That's your role. Act. Send a generous check now to your American Cancer Society. It's not a small part. As Shakespeare said, many strokes, though with a little axe, felled the hardest timbered oak. Remember, it's your American Cancer Society. Here's a message from your kidney foundation. Have you ever stood in line, my friend? Not for hours, but for years on end. Not waiting for a ticket for a show you want to see. But just for the chance to live life normally. Waiting for the gift of life. Pass it on, pass it on. Give the gift of life. Pass it on, pass it on. Somewhere someone depends on you. You can give the gift of life and help someone who depends on you by becoming an organ donor. 
you can sign a special line on your driver's license or get an organ donor card from your kidney foundation. A moment to sign could mean a lifetime to others. Remember, we're talking about life. Pass it on, pass it on. Give the gift of life. Pass it on, pass it on. Somewhere someone depends on you. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a story of adventure with Howard Duff as your host. Let's listen. The girl who was killed with him, you knew her as Vienna 2? Yeah, Vienna 2. <laughs> she wasn't very bright, actually. No? Can you believe such stupidity? An amateur working with the professionals. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.